Well, am I supposed to start to wait into the lecture straight away? Or? <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite know what the program is. I thought somebody would announce, now we're all going to start. So, did, is that what I'm supposed to do? So now we're all going to start? Thank you. Dr. Robert Yap, Chairman of ASEAN Business Advisory Council. Dr. Seri, Dr. Douglas Fu, Vice Chairman of the Singapore Business Federation. Mr. Ho Mankit, Chief Executive Officer, Singapore Business Federation. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. May I begin by thanking the ASEAN Business Council for inviting me to deliver a keynote speech. This is the second time that I have taken part in this event which provides an excellent uh, platform for the promotion of business and investment in Myanmar and ASEAN at large. The theme of my speech will be simply business investment in Myanmar and ASEAN, though of course I shall be concentrating on Myanmar. We have to start from basics because Myanmar is a very new player in the market economy scene. But because we're starting from basics, it's not going to be that simple for us. In fact, it's more complicated because we have to catch up with the others while at the same time making sure that whatever we do is in harmony uh, with our country at the stage at, that it is in now. So I would like to start with some, with some background information on Myanmar's economy. We have a 12-point national economic policy which aims at fostering sustainable development in our country, development that is inclusive and people-centered. And that, of course, is in line with ASEAN's values as well. Our investment policy supports the implementation of our national economic policy and national economic development. When we think of development, actually, we don't think just in terms of our economy. We have to think in terms particularly of building up the capacity of our people. Reform measures have been undertaken to create a more attractive, investor-friendly environment in Myanmar. As you are perhaps aware, the new Myanmar investment law was promulgated in October 2016 to create a better environment for investment and to bring our economy in line with international and regional agreements. With the technical assistance of the international Finance Corporation. The new law aims at creating a fair and more level playing field for both foreign and domestic investors. The new Myanmar investment law contains a, contains a number of invest, important provisions that will encourage responsible business and support investors to do business with ease through transparent, simplified, and quick procedures. We are very concerned with responsible business because as a country that uh, was under author an authoritarian system for, well, more than half a century, so responsibility was something that uh, many people were unaware of because everything was taken care of, of by the authorities. Nobody was supposed to think of their own responsibility. So in business, as in other areas, we are trying to promote the concept of responsibility. That's why we, we want to encourage responsible business, business best practices, not just for the sake of those who are investing, but also to educate our people who have not had enough experience of business on the scale that we hope that it will be taking place in Myanmar today. A permit from the Myanmar investment uh, reform measures have been undertaken to create a more attractive investor-friendly uh, investor environment, as I mentioned earlier. So one of the things that we are doing is to make it much simpler and much quicker because I understand, we understand in Myanmar that investors want to get on quickly. They don't want to drag their feet and waste a lot of time finding out what they can do and what they cannot do. So we want to let them know very quickly what they can do and we hope that what they cannot do is kept down to a minimum. 
A permit from the Myanmar Investment Commission will no longer be required for every investment project. That is how it used to be, and that would help hold up the process of starting a business to a considerable extent. It is guaranteed now that investments will not be ex expropriated directly or indirectly. Income tax exem exemptions will be granted according to zones and promoted areas. The development gap between the states and regions will be reduced through power delegation and the establishment of a, grievous, a grievance system. We have 14 states and regions in Myanmar, and not all of them are. We have development gaps between our states and regions. It's not just development, development gaps between us and other members of ASEAN. And when we look to the development of our states and regions, we have to think of the political aspect as well as the economic ones. For example, we cannot always invest where it would uh, be most uh, lucrative for us uh, in the material sense. Sometimes we have to invest for the sake of bringing our people closer together, for the sake of political uh, equality to, uh, and harmony, because uh, some of our regions, especially the border regions, are very undeveloped, which is not to say that Myanmar as a whole is very developed. We are not. We are a developing nation. But some some uh, regions are less developed than others, and we often have to invest for the sake of social cohesion and harmony rather than for pure economic gain. But we hope that investments can be made in such a way that these two needs are fairly balanced. We have been prescribing more laws during, uh, during 2017 and uh, the beginning of this year to make sure that the economic reforms that we want are comprehensive. Reforms have been undertaken in every sector throughout Myanmar. Some are highly visible, but some are less obvious. Reforms that seek to strengthen macroeconomic management are absolutely essential for economic stability, which in turn is a strong magnet for attracting increased investment. Such reforms are not immediately visible to most people, but their impact is substantial and long-lasting, as I'm sure everybody in this room knows, because I understand that those who are attending this occasion are here because they are interested in business, they are interested in investing, and so they will understand the importance of certain measures which are not immediately obvious to, uh, to the majority of our people. An important recent reform which can be considered revolutionary for us is the modernization of the more than 100 years old company's lo law to reflect the current business and regulatory environment. The Myanmar Company's Law was enacted, enacted on 6 December 2017. It came into effect in August 2018 with the implementation of the electronic registry. As a result of the electronic registry, registry, companies can now be registered in Myanmar within a few hours by using the MICO Myanmar Company's online system. This may sound old, old hat to you, but it's very, very new for us. And we are proud of it, and we want you to know that we are catching up with the rest of us and with the rest of the world. The new company's law has transformed Myanmar's corporate landscape and will make it easier for businesses to be registered as companies. It will provide greater flexibility for companies in their conduct of business and the management of their internal affairs, while at the same time ensuring certainty certainty and stability in corporate regulation. It will also do much to improve the starting business ranking, which is a main indicator of the doing business ranking of Myanmar. I'm saying this because we want a lot of people to start business in Myanmar, and I would like to assure you that starting business will now be much easier than it has ever been. Up to now, as of September 2018, over 14,000 companies are registered on our online platform, and over 4,000 are newly cooperated. The Myanmar Investment Commission has been reorganized with a new investment team 
led by Union Minister U Thang Tun. The new MIC team is now reviewing all processes, not only within the MIC itself, but also within other government agencies with a view to streamlining and then establishing simple, clear, and predictable standard operating procedures. We anticipate that this exercise will contribute to the development of a single window system for use by all investors and businesses who may or may not be registered under the MIC. Such a single window system will go a long way towards addressing impediments faced by investors while at the same time allowing us to provide them not only with pre-investment but also with post-investment services. The main purpose of this procedural streamlining, SOP development and single window system creation is to advance not only a favorable but a predictable facilitative and friendly investment environment. A success story which highlights a type of positive partnership that can be achieved between our respective public and private sectors is the Thilua SEZ. I'm happy to be able to claim that the Thilua SEZ has become a crowning success in a very short time, receiving a total investment of $1.491 billion a figure that reflects the dollar value of those investments actually entering the economy. Investors from countries such as Japan, the United States, Germany, France, Sweden, Australia, China, Singapore, Singapore India, Thailand, and Taiwan have invested in the Thilua SEZ, and there are many more gearing up to invest in Thilua SEZ B. As he said, the, uh, A obviously is the one I was just talking about. Myanmar's re-emergence comes at a time when the world is facing rising protectionist sentiments, a shift away from multi multilateralism in favor of bilateralism, and in some cases, even isolationism, and amidst currency and trade tensions between some countries. Unlike 10 years ago, ago today, Myanmar is exposed to these global macroeconomic shifts in ways never before experienced. It's been difficult for us to cope in some ways, but it's unavoidable if we want to enter the mainstream of the world economy. We have to accept the difficulties as well as the opportunities that will be open to us. Luckily, despite global challenges, the growth outlook for developing Asia in 2018 was recently upgraded to 6% or 0.1 percentage points higher than the rate envisaged in September 2017 by the ADB. As part of this developing Asia, Myanmar's economic trajectory is truly promising. The opening of Myanmar's markets is now in full swing. As what has been referred to, to we are what has been referred to as Southeast Asia's final frontier market. Mark, so we provide innumerable investment opportunities. Some are plain to see, others are waiting to be found by those with foresight and imagination. Let me say a few words about what we mean by the final frontier market, or as they say, the last frontier of Southeast Asia. We have land, we have a good young working population. We have many unexplored resources. I don't want to use the word unexploited because exploitation has very bad connotations, but let's put it as unexplored. Exploration is exciting, exploration is lucrative, and exploration will help us to develop our country quickly. A long time ago, just before we achieved independence, some of the leaders of our independence movement said, we will have to run while the rest of the world is walking if we are to catch up. We are still in that situation. We know that Myanmar will have to run to catch up with the rest of the world, to catch up with Singapore and all those other Asian nations which have gone before us in the de uh, on the development road. I would now like to turn a little towards Asian 
business and investments, although I'm sure all of you know more about it than I do. We ASEAN member states are holding together and moving forward to reach our goal with one vision and one identity as one community. For Myanmar, ASEAN plays an important role for economic cooperation. As of September 2018, investments from ASEAN account for about 45% of total investments in Myanmar, demonstrating the strong economic ties between our country and our other ASEAN member states. And we would like these ties to become stronger because we believe in the ASEAN community and we believe that we have not only much to learn from each other, but also uh, to teach each other. Even the less developed countries in Asia, ASEAN, I think, have some lessons from which the more developed countries would be able to profit. As we all know, the ASEAN Comprehensive Investment Agreement has been signed and investors from ASEAN countries can now enjoy the incentives provided under, under the terms of the agreement. The ASEAN India, ASEAN China, ASEAN Korea, ASEAN Hong Kong investment agreements and the ASEAN Australia New Zealand free trade agreement have also been signed and these agreements will bring new benefits for our member states. I strongly believe that by working together, we will enjoy greater efficiency, productivity and profits and that better jobs will be created as a result of the global value chain. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our ASEAN friends to invest in Myanmar. In such priority sec sec sectors, priority for us, but I think you will find that these sectors are also the kind of sectors which will be um, profitable for you. The priority sectors such as agriculture and its related services. Myanmar is still a mainly agriculture country. More than 70% of our population are engaged in pursuits in the agriculture sector. So we want to develop it, we want to modernize it, and we want to see Myanmar develop into uh, an agri-based industrialized nation. Because we think that free food security is one, going to be one of the great concerns of our day. And we want to base our development programs on this need of the world because we will be, we will be supplying the world with what, what we need and, and at the same time giving an opportunity to, to our people to develop what they have. And the other priority, priority areas are services related to agricult the agricultural industry, value added production of agricultural products, livestock production, breeding, and production of fishery products, export prom promotion industries, import substitution industries, power sector, logistics industries, education services, healthcare industry, well, you name it, it's all there. We want to concentrate particularly on those industries and businesses which will help to promote better education in our country. I'm sure Singaporeans know that at one time, our education system was considered one of the best in Asia. Many of our best educated people came to Singapore in the 70s and 80s, and uh, I say proudly that they were part of Singapore's develop development scene when it was developing. Now it's already developed. We would like Singapore and other ASEAN countries to come to us and help us to develop again that we may raise the standards of our education system, which unhappily fell behind uh, over the last few decades. Rebuilding an education system takes time because it is not always uh, possible to, for some people to continue their education once they are already launched on a career. But our young people are there and our young people are the great potential. They are our most uh, valuable resource, although Myanmar is famous for its natural resources such as uh, gas and uh, various, uh, uh, various precious stones which are known to the whole world and of course our agriculture produce and uh, 
so many natural resources. We have our timber. Uh, we, but all these, all these are nothing compared to our human resource. And that's what we want to nurture and develop. But because our natural resources will, will vanish with time. They will not be there forever. But our people will be there forever. And we want to develop the potential of our people. We want our people to be our main investment. And we would like those who are interested in investing in Myanmar to think of investing in the capacity of our people as well. And it is only by working with them that you will be able to make the best of the businesses that you set up in Myanmar, which I hope you will set up in Myanmar. As you're, many of you are aware, private sector development is crucial for the economic development of a country, and Myanmar recognizes the importance of promoting the private sector. This is why today there are a lot of young entrepreneurs there from the private sector. We only have two ministers, but lots and lots of businessmen from the private sector, which is a reflection of the way in which we are trying to develop our economy. The private sector cooperating with the government to fulfill all the needs, not just of our people, but of, of those who wish, who wish to invest in our country. We have a the development com uh, committee led by Vice President One that meets with private investors every month and brings them together with officials from relevant ministries because there had been complaints that the government was not close enough to the private sector and that people from the private, private sector were not able to explain their difficulties and needs to the government in a way that would allow these difficulties to be overcome quickly. So we're trying, we, we have set up mechanisms that will make it easier for the private sector to get the kind of assistance that they need from the government in order that they may be able to forge a help ahead with the development of the economy. We also have a working group on improving the ease of doing business ranking and 10 supporting groups related to ease of doing business indicators have also been established with the aim of raising Myanmar's ranking in ease of doing business index of the World Bank. But our real concern is not the index. The index is just a reflection of what we are able to achieve. Our real concern is to make sure that doing business becomes easier for those who want to do responsible business in our country. That includes our people as well as investors from abroad. So the, the ranking is just a useful way, uh, a quick way of people to, fi uh, to find out how they might expect to do in Myanmar. But I think you have to look to the future and not, even, not just and not just at the present, because the present is a, an immediate reflection of the past, and uh, the future is going to be a reflection of the present. So we have to look at what the future is likely to bring if businesses are to uh, invest soundly, because I think businesses think of what the returns are going to be, and the, the returns are what happens in the future. We are trying to structure our economic reforms in such a way that would-be investors will be able to calculate, uh, not absolutely accurately, of course, I don't think that would be po possible, but would be able to uh, calculate with confidence what the likely outcome is going to be. And we want all those who are interested in investing in Myanmar to understand that the government is there to help them not to hinder the process, but to help along the, uh, the process of investing in our country. But whether or not doing business in Myanmar is really going to be easy, you have to find out for yourself. You have to come, you have to find out. I have to say that we have with us here today the, uh, our Minister for Planning and Finance, and he will be able to explain to you a lot more than I have time for now, about what we are doing to try to make business uh, good and, uh, and business attractive for outsiders who wish to invest in our country. 
the best thing, as I said, would be for you to find out for yourself. And also, I would like you to think of investing in Myanmar as investing not just in one country, but in investing in the future of ASEAN. We are a committed member of ASEAN. We believe that our region can move forward more quickly by negotiating with each other, by working together, and by giving understanding to each other to resolve the problems that we face as we progress along the development path at different paces. Singapore is way ahead of us now. Although, mind you, at one time we were ahead of Singapore, and I keep saying that we've got not only to catch up, but to overtake Singapore, because this is what uh, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew said a long time ago, when Singapore was a newly in independent nation, that in 20 years we'll catch up with Burma, Burma as we were then. So I have to say now that we, we should not wait 20 years to catch up with Singapore. I hope that you will help us to catch up with Singapore. I hope you will help us and other ASEAN nations which are uh, not on the same development level as the more advanced ASEAN nations to catch up and to become a region where we enjoy not just close uh, political and social relations, but also economic relations based on a harmonious environment where we can be confident that we are all there to help each other. Certainly, we, are, we want to believe that our government is there to help not just our people, but anybody else who is interested in investing in our country socially, economically. Uh, social development and economic development cannot be separated, particularly in a, a country like ours, where we are trying to move forward at the same time in every sector. We cannot just ignore education if we want to progress economically. But we cannot ignore the economy either if we want to make progress socially. It's all interrelated and very challenging. This is why we use the word frontier. A frontier is, a, is a, an environment that offers many challenges for those with imagination, with those with foresight, with those who have the courage to do what others have not tried before. So I would like you to think of, uh, of expanding your capacity for adventure and for economic uh, innovation in our country because we are there for you and we hope that you are also here for us. I'm confident that investing in Myanmar will bring good returns for you, for us, and for us as well. Thank you.